enthalpy is a state function, which means it's pathway independent. It doesn't matter um, how you get from A to B. The difference in energy from A to B is the same, uh, whether you went one pathway or another. It's pathway independent. Um, so for example, if I had a reaction that, that looked like A uh, goes to C, and the um, enthalpy of that reaction was 10 kilojoules. Well, suppose I, I broke that up into different steps. Suppose I had uh, A goes to B, and that reaction is you know, 5 kilojoules, the delta H. And then I had another one. You know, I broke this up into two steps. And then step two was B goes to C, and that delta H was also 5 kilojoules. That should mean that when I add these up, and think about it kind of like a triangle. I can go from A to B to C, or I can just go right from A to B, or A to C, sorry. A to C is 10 kilojoules in, in delta H, A to B, B to C. If I add up the steps, like step one and step two, it has to equal the same as it would be going from, from A to C. That's really what Hess's Law is saying. You can take this overall reaction and split it up into, into little steps. Um, so when I do this, if I take A, if I added these reactions up, the way I add reactions, I take whatever's on the left, A plus B, arrow, and then whatever's on the, on the right, B plus C. And then I cancel things that are the same on both sides, like this, this B is the same over here. So my overall reaction looks like A goes to C, right, which is the same as over here. So when I add up those reactions, I just add up the delta H's. So suppose this is delta H1, this is delta H2, I get 5 plus 5 equals 10 kilojoules, right? This is delta H1 plus delta H2. Oops equals 10 kilojoules. So that's all that Hess's law is, is really saying. And there's a couple rules to it. So it's a state function, which means it's pathway independent. You can just add up all the little pieces. Um, now delta H is known for many reactions. So you don't have to actually measure the delta H for every single reaction. There are, there are a couple tricks that we can use to, um, to get us where we need to go. So for example, if Go back up here. So if A to B is five kilojoules, if I just flip that reaction around, right? This is endothermic. This is endothermic because it's positive. So if something is endothermic in one direction, it's exothermic in the opposite opposite direction. So if I flip that reaction around, and I get B to C, all I have to do is change the sign of delta H. Now I have negative five kilojoules. Um, if I suppose I wanted I wanted twice as much, right? So if one mole of A yields one mole of B, and I get five kilojoules out of that. Well. 2 moles of A to 2 moles of B will give me 10 kilojoules, right? So, or or this one, right? If I have 2B goes to 2C, ah, right, I should get twice as much. I should get two times whatever delta H is. So that's going to give me, um, well, in this case, right, negative 2, negative, jeez. There, if I just multiply everything by 2, then I multiply the delta H by 2. 2 times negative 5, right, negative 10 kilojoules. And then the final thing was really looking at, um, if I add two reactions, I just have to add their delta H. So that's kind of what I did over here. So three rules for enthalpy. If you reverse the reaction, change the sign of delta H. If you have to multiply the reaction by 2, then you can multiply the delta H by 2. Um, and then if you add two reactions, just add their, add their delta H's. And so we're going to use this um, because you can manipulate these, the delta H in order to get the reaction that you're looking for. So suppose you had um, a, an overall reaction that looked like this, like 2A plus D gives me 3C. But suppose it was really hard to measure that direction, that reaction in one step, and you, can, you know the delta H for this step and that step. Can you manipulate these two reactions in such a way that when you add them up, they equal this reaction? That's what we want to do next. We're going to basically change. We're going to go step by step and change these reactions. When you change the reaction, you change the delta H. Two things you're allowed to do, you can multiply it by some number, then you multiply the delta H. Or if you divide by that number, then you divide the delta H by that number. Um, and if you flip the reaction around, reverse the direction, if it's endothermic in one direction, it's exothermic in the other. So you're just going to flip the sign of the delta H when you reverse the reaction. And then when you add the two reactions, then you um, add the delta H's. So it's a very systematic uh, way of doing this. Okay. 
a little more room there. All right, so what you're going to do is start uh, the first reactant, right? So I say there's 2A here. I'm trying to build this reaction. This is my overall reaction. I'm trying to find the delta H for this. I know that if I could break this up into little pieces, little steps, then when I add them up, I can get the overall reaction. When I add up the delta H's, I can get the overall delta H. So go piece by piece. So I have 2A here. So you go down to your two choices, and uh, this first reaction has an A in it. I want two as a reactant, I only have one as a reactant. So what I'm gonna do is multiply this whole reaction by two. So I'm gonna end up with 2A plus 2B gives me 2C. I'll write it down here. 2A plus 2B gives me 2C. And when I do that, I have to multiply the delta H by two. So when you're, on a, when you're taking an exam, you're gonna to wanna to do that. Show these steps so I know exactly what you did. So two times all this, two times all that. Uh, my delta H here now is going to be 2 times 5, which is 10 kilojoules. All right, so I have A as I need it. I have 2A as I need it. And now you're going to look, go to the next reactant, and you have D. Okay, so D is over here. It's in the product side of this reaction. So how do I get the products to be the reactants? I just have to flip that reaction around. Oops. Whoa, there we go. Flip that reaction around. Um, so now I do that, my reactants become products, my products become reactants. So now I have D goes to 2B plus C. And when I do that, I change the sign, right? So I'm going to change the sign here. So negative times a negative gives me a positive. And now I have positive 10 kilojoules is my delta H. Now I'm going to add this reaction up to make sure that it equals what I think it equals. What I was trying to get to, 2A plus 2B plus D gives me 2C plus 2B plus another C. So that gives me 3C. All right, so I'm going to combine these like terms and then cancel anything that's the same on both sides. So I have a 2B over here. I have a 2B over there. So I end up with 2A plus D gives me 3C. And that is the reaction that I was looking for. So now I can add these delta H's. I have 10 plus 10 gives me 20 kilojoules. There's a whole bunch of these to work with. So let's try, let's try another one. So again, the, the reaction that you're trying to build is the one that doesn't have an enthalpy. And your final answer is the enthalpy. You're trying to add up all these delta H's to get the enthalpy, the delta H of this final reaction. So just go reactant by reactant. Um, here I have 2C. So you go into this problem and you try to find where do I have a C by itself. So there's no carbons in here by itself. Here's a carbon and check the last one. Good. So this is the one I want. Um, I want two carbons as a reactant. I have this carbon as a reactant. I only have one. So I need to make this guy multiply it by two. And when I do that, I'm going to also multiply my delta H by two. So the first reactant, the reaction that I have here is 2C plus 2O2 gives me 2CO2. And my delta H here is going to be two times the, yeah, I'll just two times negative 393.5 kilojoules. Okay, don't drop your negative signs. It's really easy to do that. The next reaction I want to manipulate has a hydrogen in it. Um, this one does not have any hydrogens in it. This one does. I want one as a reactant. I have one as a reactant, so I don't have to change that at all. I'm going to keep that just the way it is. So I'm just going to write that one down here. I have um, H2 plus 1 half O2. Don't let those fractions scare you. Don't be scared of fractions. Delta H is negative 285.8. They're both in kilojoules. kilojoules. Now the last one, C2H2, I see that over here. Um, I have, have it as a reactant. I want it as a product. So what are you going to do? flip it around. When you flip it, you change the sign. Uh, so when I flip that, I make my product reactants, reactants products. I end up with two CO2 and an H2O. And then C2H2 plus five halves O2. And my new delta H over here is going to be positive 1299.6. Now add this up and make sure everything cancels the way you think it should be canceling. Um, I have a two CO2s on the left, I have two CO2s on the right. Okay, so those are going to cancel. You can either write them all out and then start canceling, or if I have one water on the left, I have you know one water on the left, one on the right, great. I don't have any of those carbons canceling, so you know, I have t two carbons, and then I have a hydrogen here. And now I have two plus a half, that's two and a half oxygens. Oh, over here, 
I have two and a half oxygens, so those are going to cancel. And then I have C2H2. Good. And that's the reaction I was trying to get. So everything kind of canceled. And now all I have to do is add up all of these delta H's. So that's negative, that's 2 times negative 393.5 plus negative 285 and then the 1299. Make sure your positives and negatives are right. Work this out and you get 226.8 kilojoules. And that's your enthalpy. So we're going to try one more on the next video.